hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Um, wahaw mo siya. A very happy, wonderful, blessed new year to you and your household. Hallelujah. Kindly do indicate if you can hear me properly. Do indicate if you can hear me properly. And do share with a friend that we are live to give you the word of the Lord. Today I'm not able to see your comments because I do not have the device close by. So I'm going to trust that I will be given an indication by my team that you can hear me properly. Hallelujah. Do you indicate if you can hear me properly before we begin the word of the Lord that we have for you today. Hallelujah. We do apologize for what happened on the first on New Year's Eve, it was beyond our control at the time. There were there was a problem with internet and with connection, but we do trust that uh, those of you that were able to go back to the Word, even though it was a bit inconvenient, uh, we had a lot of cutouts. But I do trust that you were able to follow through with the fullness of that Word. Because today I'm not going to be able to go through that word again, even though it's a very important word that encapsulates the fullness of what God is doing in this very season. And because of that, it is very vital and important for you to know and understand what the Spirit was relaying in that day. Hallelujah. And just to recap for five minutes, concerning that word, God had spoken to me very, very clearly to say that it is a year of judgment and also, not even a year, we have entered a season. You see, we need to move away from this notion or this culture that we have come up with, this religion that we have come up with of crossovers or of expecting God to only speak when the year ends and expecting God to speak concerning the whatever he's doing within 12 months. Hallelujah. What God is doing in this time cannot be put into our little time frames that we have come up with. God might have spoken in the past year, might have given a word every December the 31st. But we need to understand that God is constantly speaking, especially in this critical time of transition into the fullness of what God had in store or what God had planned for mankind in our time. So it is very, very imperative that we understand that this word is not for 2023. Hallelujah. This is a word that is speaking into what God is doing in the now. And however that is going to unfold is entirely dependent on God and God's own timing. Which, by the way, he never reveals to man. He's always telling us what he's doing so that we can get our houses in order, so that we can align our lives with that which he's doing. But God never gives a specific time. It's very rare for God to give you a specific time to say, on the 21st of this particular month, at this particular hour, this is what I'm going to be doing. This is how sometimes we even accuse servants of God of not being accurate with the word of the Lord. Why? Because we put the word of the Lord into our own time frames. Hallelujah. And then by the time the word is made manifest, you are caught off guard.
God. Why? Because you had already thrown that word. You already threw that word into the dustbin because it didn't fall into your time frame or the time that you had expected that word to come to pass. So I just want to put that out there before we begin this word so that you know and you understand that God's timing is not man's timing. However, when God speaks, he says move. Hallelujah. When God speaks, he's saying, this is what I'm doing now. So align, begin to align your life with that which I'm doing now. Hallelujah. Because when God speaks a word, he doesn't speak only for you to just be entertained. He's not giving you his word for you to be blown away and for you to find that it's profound and it's amazing. And then you continue with your life in the path that you've been on. God, the minute his word comes or reaches your ears, he's saying it is time to align your life with my word. Because he knows between the time you receive the word and the time of manifestation, everything that he's saying in the beginning, that time frame between the beginning and the end is enough. It's a time that he has calculated as enough time of preparation on your side. As enough time for you to be taken from where you are to where God wants to take you. So when you receive the word of the Lord, you don't say maybe this word is for five years from now, two years from now, three years from now, two months from now. So I still have time. You don't have time. There is preparation that has to occur before the manifestation that is what brings about the manifestation in fact when you move according to the word of the lord when the lord the word reaches you that is the beginning of manifestation that is the beginning of the unfolding of that word in the physical realm the fact that you have heard that word in your ears it marks the beginning of manifestation now, for you to see the fullness of the picture, the same way that when you conceive a child, hallelujah, it first starts off as the seed and the egg coming together, fusing together, hallelujah. And then it multiplies from there. It becomes a zygote and then it becomes an embryo and so on and so forth until it's a fully fleshed baby that you can be able to identify as a human being. But before, when manifestation started, when the process started of that baby becoming, you couldn't tell what it looked like. But that doesn't mean that the baby didn't exist. Hallelujah. Even if you can call it a clot of blood, it is still a, it's, it is still a baby in the making. Hallelujah. It still has a name on it. Whatever God has declared concerning that baby is already in that baby. You can call it a clot of blood, you can call it whatever you want, but it has already started. Manifestation has already started. Hallelujah. So we need to go into this year, going forward, understanding, going back to understanding the ways of God and how God operates. Some of the, 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 prof, the, pro, the prophetic words that we hold so dearly today, that were spoken by the men of old, your prophet Isaiah, your Jeremiah, all of them, some of them, some of the things that they prophesied, they didn't live to see them, but their children got to see them. But in our time, because we are closer to the end, there is a compression of time, and therefore, things that would normally take 100 years to happen will take 10 years. And things that would normally take 10 years to happen will take a year. And so on and so forth. Why? Because there is an acceleration that is happening. The closer we get to the end, the more time is accelerated. The more time is compressed. Hallelujah. We are close to coming to a time where you will speak by the spirit and the minute you speak whatever word that you are speaking will be made manifest you will see that thing as you speak it you will see it that is the time that we're coming into does it mean that we are more powerful than those prophets no it's timing hallelujah 
it is timing and because we're in a time of fullness there is acceleration there is the, the, the magnitude of what God is doing is bigger than anything we've ever seen. That is why they, they wanted, they yearned to be part of what God is doing in our time. We look back at what they did, the exploits they were able to do, and we wonder, why would they want to be part of this generation that is so powerless? It's because you have not yet seen what is about to happen. You have not yet began to see the unfolding of what God is doing in your time. And mark my words when I say what God is doing, not what man is doing. You've already seen the capabilities of man. Because for the longest time, it has been man who has been trying with his own effort. It has been man with his own toiling. And no matter how anointed you are, if God is not there to endorse what you are doing, it is not going to be powerful. Hallelujah. It is not going to be as impactful as it can get. Why? Because you are in and within your own effort and your own strength and your own ability as a human being. But when God shows up, hallelujah, when God shows up, not if no one, not even those that don't believe in him, can deny that this is God. The pagan kings of old that were served by your Daniel, your Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they had to acknowledge a God they didn't serve. Why? Because when he shows up, you have no other choice but to acknowledge him. Your spirit will testify of who he is. Hallelujah. So if you look back at what Elijah was able to do, what Elisha was able to do, what all of them were able to, the exploits they were able to do in that time, your Enoch, hallelujah, the prosperity of Abraham and his sons, the, the way and the, the manner at which David was able to win war after war after war. The strategies of David and his mighty men. You get to understand that if they wanted to be part of what God is doing now, you can only imagine what God is getting ready to do. Hallelujah. Even Jesus himself who taught Every other prophet that ever existed in the miracle signs and wonders that he performed and the wisdom that he displayed. But Jesus himself even said it, that those that believe in me will do the things that I've done and even greater works than the ones that I've done, they shall do. Hallelujah. So you and I are in such a time the time that so many wanted to be a part of, that so many longed to be a part of, you and I get to be a part of it. You and I get to be the ones to see it through. The time of the manifestation of the sons of God. And God is saying it is time to arise. It is time to stop apologizing for who you are. The reason why Power is not yet displayed. And when I talk about power, please understand. I'm not merely talking about the ability to perform miracle signs and wonders. I'm talking about the fullness of the power of God. That is power to convert sinners. Power to be able to convict sinners. To come back to God. To be reconciled back to God. Power to influence those that are in the world. Power to influence the systems of this world. That is the power that I'm talking about. The power to be able to take the kingdoms of this world and make them part of the kingdom of our God. That is the power that I'm talking about. The power to be able to pull down strongholds and to pull down principalities' powers and authorities and have them under our feet so that we can finally be the head and not the tail. That's the power I'm talking about. 
the power of the sons of light. And God is saying, this is the time. I'm roaming the earth, looking for those that will say yes, looking for those that will allow my spirit to be made manifest through them. Those that will allow the inner man to come forth and to take center stage in their lives. Those are the individuals I'm looking for. Those are the individuals that will actualize the word that was spoken, that the latter glory shall be greater than the former glory. Hallelujah. Now, we need to understand something. The church has suffered violence for the longest time. The church has suffered violence for the longest time. The enemy has had his grip on the church for the longest time. Hallelujah. He's been able to manipulate believers into a religion that has nothing to do with Christianity. He's been able to manipulate us out of true belief in Jesus Christ. He's been able to manipulate us out of true following or true discipleship as followers of Christ Jesus. He's been able to tempt us with the culture of the world as opposed to the ways of our God to a point where we cannot even tell the difference between the world and the church. That is the state we find ourselves in in today's time. And that is one of the reasons why we are powerless. And like I said, power is the ability to influence. Hallelujah. Power is the ability to influence someone that has a different belief system from your own and influencing them into your own belief system. The world no longer takes us seriously. They, take, they, 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 they see us as a joke. They don't listen to us when we say Jesus can heal. Jesus delivers from sin. They don't believe it. Why? Because we are following them. And we want them to listen to us about what we claim to follow. Or who we claim to follow. We look to them for how to dress. We look to them for food. We look to them for governance, for laws. Because we don't know our own laws. We don't know our own God's laws such that we can differentiate between something that is an abomination that has been called law and something that is truly the law of God. We cannot differentiate between abominations and the ways of our God. So even when we go forth to try and win them over, we don't even know what we're winning them over to because we don't want to be discipled we don't want to learn about the God that we claim to love and follow. And we also lack evidence that we are sons of God. Why? Because there is something that stands between the evidence of inheritance and you. And that is what? Discipleship. Ability to learn how this kingdom that you are claiming to be a part of works and therefore live according to the ways of your kingdom, therefore partaking of the inheritance that your father has for you in the kingdom. But God says enough is enough. Enough is enough of this mediocrity. God is calling forth men and women who are ready to take up the gospel, who are ready to live for Jesus, unapologetically so, live for Jesus Christ. Men and women who want to know him, who don't just want what he has, but want to know him, and therefore will be able to access what he has because they want to know him. They love him enough to want to know the, the God of the source of that blessing. Hallelujah. They don't only want the blessing without the source or the knowledge of the source so that they can be able 
to what to use that blessing according to what is intended by the source. God is looking for mature believers that he can entrust in this time with serious resources. Why? Because the time has now come for the church to take center state in governance. When he instructed me to blow the horn on the 31st, on the 1st at midnight, he said, we have come into a time of heaven on earth. And the way he explained it, he said, this is how, because you need to understand something about 12. 12 is the number of governance. And 12, 12 is the number of governance or heavenly governance. Why? Because 12, the other 12 represents governance in heaven and the other 12 represents governance on earth. So when it's 12, 12, it means what? Heaven and earth are synchronized in governance. Hallelujah. And therefore, that's why the Lord said, as it was being blown, he was anointing and sending forth kings of this hour. And because the, the, the positions of kinship are in the enemy's camp, he's looking for radical. And when I say radical, I don't mean physically radical. I mean spiritually radical believers that have been earmarked or that have blue blood, that have been earmarked for kingship and rulership in this time. The lights of Jehu that are now being called forth to take up their positions. Hallelujah. God is calling forth the Jehus of the hour to also get the church back in the order that was intended in the first place. God is looking for individuals that will forcefully bring prayer back into the house of God. Individuals that are not afraid to pray and allow the Spirit of God to pray through them without being conscious of their environment. Therefore, allowing the Spirit to send forth the holy fire of the Lord that will be able to engulf everything and anything that is profane in the house of the Lord. Individuals that will allow the Spirit to take them over so much that the Spirit will be able to collaborate with the heavenly angels, the holy angels that have been released in this hour to set things in order. Individuals that will not be afraid to speak thus saith the Lord in government, in the, the parliament, in all these places, even in your boardrooms, where they want to pass laws, regulations that are an abomination to your God, ability to stand boldly and allow the spirit to speak through you who is superior to everyone in that room, including the CEO. You see, the, the problem is when it's you, if it was you to, who was going to speak, you have no authority, you have no power. So it would be an insult to them. And it wouldn't bring about conviction or it wouldn't even shift things in that atmosphere, however way God wants to shift them. Because sometimes the shift will mean the CEO getting fired. Sometimes the shift would mean the CEO repenting and then starting to listen to you and promoting you to a place of counsel. But either way, the ways of our God will be what will be established in that place. The enemy tells you, keep quiet. If you speak, it is the end of you. Knowing very well that your number one weapon is the spoken word of the Lord. It's the word that shuts down everything that is of the enemy. It is the word of God. When it's been spoken, that comes with authority to shift atmospheres. And it does not matter which atmosphere. He made all things, which means all systems are subject to him. But because we have lost that, we are afraid. We don't know the potency of his word. So when he tells us to speak, we hold back because we don't trust in the power of the spoken word of the Lord. 
while the enemy on the other hand is busy speaking all manner of abominations because he understands the power of words and he knows the only word that can shut down his word is the word of the Lord and as long as I make them afraid and I keep them quiet nothing will change and I will stay in power but God says enough Jehu's are rising in this hour whether you like it or not they are rising those that will not yield to religion those that are not satisfied with the status quo. Those that are not afraid of the Jezebelic spirit. Those that are not afraid of kings that have no business in being in places of kingship, positions of kingship. Leading their people astray from the ways of the Lord. Hallelujah. Those that understand that the judgment of God is much more severe than the judgments of the kings of this world. Therefore, it is important to follow through on what the king of kings is saying. And if it aligns with what the kings of this world are saying, wonderful. But if what he's saying and what the kings of this world are saying, there is a clash, then unfortunately there is a problem. But guess what? At the end of the day, we are going to follow what the king of kings is saying. When Jehu was executing the judgment of the Lord upon the house of Ahab, every time he would finish, he would say, and this is what the Lord had said. He wanted to make sure everything is going according to what God said. Not what I am saying, not what I want to do as a commander. As someone that has led armies for the longest time, soldiers for the longest time, they have been taking orders from me. He didn't come with that kind of authority. He came knowing and understanding I may be a commander to my own soldiers, to my own army, but now I have been sent forth by the commander of the heaven's armies who is superior to me, and I need to make sure I follow all the instructions he has given me. There is no room for emotions when God sends you forth, whether to reward or to judge. There is no room for your emotions. There is no room for what you feel, what you want, how you feel about it. What you think is the right thing and what is not the right thing. Your judgment is poor. Your judgment is compromised because you are a fallen man. But the judgment of the Lord is perfect. Hallelujah. And we need to understand that. One of the reasons, the main reason why Saul was disqualified is because he, what, he challenged the judgment of the Lord. He thought he knew better. He thought God made a mistake and God will surely reward me for correcting this mistake that he made. But he was removed from power. Why? God is looking for those that execute his word. Not those that are coming to add or subtract to his word. But those that are wise enough to know and to understand that the word of the law, the word of the king is law. Hallelujah. It is not subject to debate. It is law. Hallelujah. I therefore make this appeal to you as a child of God. In this time where darkness and deep darkness covers the earth, you shining and you coming forth as a light in this hour is you saying no to the darkness. That is how you will light up. That is how you will stand out from among them when you stand by the truth because you cannot separate truth from light. Where there's truth, there's light. Where there are lies, there's darkness. There's confusion. You are lost. You don't know what to do. You don't know where to go. Your, your judgment. Hallelujah. So God is calling us forth in this time to stand as vessels of honor. Vessels that can carry him. 
in anything and everything that he would desire to use you for in this hour. I've said this before, we have come into a time where no one will hide behind anyone. Every single one of us will be faced with a situation where you have to choose. Whether in the workplace, Satan is bringing his laws, he is bringing his ways fully and with full force. You are going to be forced to call a man a she. It is going to be part of the, 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 the prospectors of many organizations in this hour. But it is only is going to be short-lived because those that will stand in this hour, God will use them to overturn this evil that Satan is bringing in places where he has ordained as Goshen in this hour. But if you are going to hide behind others in this time and say, oh, well, Apostle will talk about it, or so-and-so, I'm not at your workplace. I don't influence the people that are at your workplace. I influence you. You are meant to influence them. Hallelujah. They don't watch what you watch. They don't hear what you are hearing. They don't know what your God is saying, but you do. So if you are in a situation where you, your boss is gay and you are told to call him or he's a transgender and you are faced with a situation where he tells you, call me a she, or your boss is the one telling you that when this person comes in, we call he or him a she or she a he or them. You have to make a choice. We have come into a time where as a doctor, as a nurse, they are going to try and push for abortion to be legal. And that it is going to be a right. Someone will, will have that right. And then you will have to what? To execute. And to perform abortion. It may come. What do you do when it comes as a law? Hallelujah. What do you do? We are praying about it. That this thing will not be pushed in our nation. That these abominations will not be pushed in our nation. But as we pray, you need to understand they are also being pushed. And when you find yourself in that situation, that is where now your faith will be tested as a child of God. This is a time to know beyond reasonable doubt that God is the source of your blessing. That God is the source of your blessing, your income. God is the source of your income. He's the source of your food, your shelter, your clothing. He is the source of your blessing. It is a time to know and understand. And if he was not, it is a time to convert and to come into the kingdom, the covering of the kingdom of your father, where there is no lack. The only thing you need to do is align yourself with his perfect will for your life. And you will open up the resources that have been reserved specially for you and your loved ones or your family. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Lord is calling us in this time. And I also spoke about Malachi. In 2022, we discussed in a few sessions, where the Lord said, convert into the kingdom. And he spoke about faith being our new currency. Hallelujah. Faith being our new currency. We need to understand that everything that has been happening, the ways of God do not change. Just because evil has prevailed for a long time doesn't mean that God has changed his mind about righteousness and what it means to be righteous. Now, majority of the time, humanity always falls into this trap where they, mis they misunderstand a season of judgment or a season where evil has been given free range because the people of God were not stepping up or were not within the ways or the path of their God. The same way that the children of Israel, who refused the word of the Lord through the prophet Jeremiah, were then taken into captivity by Babylon for 70 years. Now, they were in captivity for 70 years. And when you are in captivity, it means that 
your masters, which are the agents of Satan, are more prosperous than you. Now, are we then saying that when your masters, or during the hour and the season where your masters are more prosperous than you because you are in a season of captivity, does it then mean that now God has changed his mind about righteousness? No. No, ma'am. No, sir. He has not changed his mind about righteousness. In fact, during a time of captivity, that is a time where you need to get your house in order. Because captivity is not there forever. Captivity is there for a season. Hallelujah. And in our time, the Lord said, look to the, the, the time where the queen is taken away. The time when the queen is taken away marks the beginning of a new era. And that era is an era of what? Of the manifestation of my sons. What does that mean? I'm about to what? To bring them in light. I'm about to exalt them. I'm about to take them out of the place of captivity and into the place of blessedness, which is that true identity. Now in Malachi, they were murmuring amongst themselves complaining amongst themselves to say, now shall we call the wicked blessed? Because it looks like they get blessed. We are the ones that believe in God, but they are the ones that are getting blessed. And the Lord heard them. And you know when he heard them? When the time had come for him to hear them. Because he's God. He, it's not like he didn't hear them all this time. When the Bible says then God heard them, it means that it was now time for him to pay attention to what they were saying. Because the time of captivity was now over. And it was now time for him to remember them. And him remembering them, it means now his countenance is about to be upon them. You see, when you go into captivity, when you are in a time of captivity, it means God has turned his face away, his countenance. That is why David would always, always cry about the countenance of the Lord to say, Lord, do not turn your countenance away. Or, Lord, I pray for your countenance to be upon me. Why? Because when God remembers you, that means he gets to see you. He gets to look at you. And when the minute he looks at you, the minute his countenance and your countenance lock together, that moment, that's when your life begins to change. Why? Because he is light itself. Therefore, you begin to reflect his light. Hallelujah. You begin to shine as he shines. You begin to be as glorious as he is glorious. And anything that bears the light of God is blessed. And man has no choice but to bless it. Why? Because it is the countenance or the reflection of the countenance of the one who is blessing itself. God says the books have been opened in this hour. And he said because books are open, there is silence in heaven. When God turns to look at man, when he remembers his own, that constantly rebel against his ways. When he remembers them, there is a silence and angels bring books of remembrance before him. To show him what humanity has been pouring in their bowls of incense. Whether they have been pouring stinky incense or whether they have been pouring beautiful and sweet incense. You see, God, to remember you, you need to understand something about God's scent. God's scent or God's, the senses that God has. And in this case, when we talk about the sense of, of scent, of smelling something, when we talk about the ability to smell, when God smells your prayers, which went forth as words from your mouth, but when they ascended into the heavenlies, they became incense, hallelujah, that he can be able to smell. And if whatever you are doing, because you need to understand, your incense is not only what you speak with your mouth. I need you to hear me very well in this one. The incense or the aroma 
that is from your life is not only from what you speak, but also what you do with your hands. The works of your hands. So everything that you do goes forth and ascends into the heavenlies as an incense. Now, if you are out of the will of God for your life, whatever incense that is going forth or that is ascending into your bowl of incense is not going to be a sweet aroma. If you are corrupt in your works, it is not going to be a sweet aroma. Hallelujah. If you are vile with that which comes out of your mouth, it is not going to be a sweet aroma. If you are constantly complaining in the place of prayer, it is not going to be a sweet aroma. But when you worship him, when you thank him, even in difficult times, when you don't understand, but you still don't sin in your lack of understanding. You see, there's a difference between complaining, there's a difference between murmuring and complaining and asking God for understanding. David knew how to ask for understanding when he didn't understand. He would state who God is and then he would state his case and then he would finish with who God is. That's a man with wisdom. He didn't want to upset the Lord. He didn't want that which he was inquiring about to go forth as a stinky incense but a sweet aroma of someone who has reference and understanding that he's talking or he's speaking or he's approaching a king and not just any king but the king of kings who has the ability to kill both his body and his soul so the time now has come where the books are being opened and according to the aroma you have sent forth into the heavenlies, you are going to receive an outpouring of the results of what you have poured into that bowl. You see, you cannot blame anyone for what is coming in your life in this season because you are the one that sent it forth. The question is, what have you sent forth? That's why he said it's a season of judgment and reward. There are only two things that are coming in this hour. Judgment or reward. And the question is, what have you been sowing? And because he's a good God, when you sow bad seed, he, he will alert you. He will say, mm -mm, don't sow that. Don't sow that. Sow something else. But some decide, you know what? I'm not only going to sow this, I'm also going to water it. So that it can spring forth because this is what I want. But because you've been given the choice, the, the, the freedom of choice, that's something that God can never take away from you. But at the same time, sometimes it is, it is our biggest curse, the freedom of choice. Because majority of the time, many make choices out of a place of ignorance that are going to be costly. But I have good news, even for those that will be judged in this hour, to say that his rod and his staff will comfort you. Hallelujah. I'll say that again. Even if you are going through a season of judgment as a child of God, understand this and remember this. His rod and his staff, may they comfort you. May you interpret what God is doing in your life in this time the right way. May you once for once listen to the voice of God and not the voice of the accuser who has you where you are today. Because after getting you to do what you've been doing, that is bringing about this correction that God is bringing in your life in this time. He will also go on the other side and say, you see, he doesn't love you. You, you have failed. You, you screwed up. And there's no hope for you. Kill yourself or leave the faith and just live it up. Live it up. Because he doesn't care. You might as well continue on this path of destruction. Because you're already destroyed. The Lord says it is not over until it is over. And as long as you have breath in you, you can still make amends. You can still change your life. And you can still go back to your father. The same way that when parents are displeased with you, they chastise you, but they don't kill you. The reason why they don't kill you is because they are, they are saying to you, we still believe you can change your ways. 
This road is meant to get you back on the path we know you can get on. The path you are supposed to be on. So that road for some of you may be losing your job. I'm not saying everyone who's going to be losing their jobs. Their jobs is a, it's, it's a judgment from the Lord. You will know what is happening in your life. Some of you losing your job will be God promoting you because he will be taking you into the place that he has in store for you, the place of blessedness. Hallelujah. Some of you, you'll be demoted from your, your placements or your assignments, even in the church. Some of you, you'll be removed from the post that you are in now into a different post because you had no business being in that post to begin with. But because we had been in a season where we chose what we wanted, we didn't allow God to direct us by His Spirit because it is the Spirit that determines who gets to do what. Not us. Hallelujah. Not how we look. Not according to our qualifications. Not according to our names, our money, or lack thereof. But according to what you have been ordained to do by God. And only the Spirit of God is the one that is able to determine your placement. Now, Satan is very smart. He's very cunning. So, he knew that once we introduce, formally introduce theology and all of these things, that we allow, you know, the, the systems of this world to determine who is a pastor and who is not a pastor, who can do what in the house of God and who cannot, that's when the spirit was taken out of his place because it is the spirit that qualifies your call. It is the spirit of God that identifies you for what you've been called to do. So if it is not the spirit that identifies, you're going to find yourself doing something simply because maybe you thought it was a good idea or somebody else thought it was a good idea or because your friend is an usher in that church, you are also going to want to be an usher. Hallelujah. Or because you just love the pulpit, you are, you are going to decide you need to do something along those lines. Anything on the pulpit. Hallelujah. Or because you love money, you decide that you are going to be the treasurer. But God didn't, he didn't call you to be that in his house. Maybe you are an usher, but you are supposed to be an intercessor. You are supposed to be a, at the gates. You are supposed to be a watchman. So Satan comes in and out as he pleases in the house of God because you are not in your position. Because it's not your place. When you have to, to place them, you don't have the wisdom of how to get them to sit where they're supposed to sit. Without them getting in your nerves. Why? It's not your place. There's no grace for it. Because it's not what you've been called to do. You slip your way into the highest position in your workplace. And then you cost not only that company. But also the people around you in that company. Because you are not supposed to be there. You are supposed to be doing something else. But you allowed the enemy to use you to get into positions that you have no business being in. Hallelujah. You have used blackmail and extortion to get into high positions that you have no business being in. And maybe God had a high position for you, but just not where you are. But because you used Satan's ways to get to the top, you are in the wrong place. But God in this season is rearranging things. That is what a shaking does. It rearranges. Hallelujah. A shaking comes to rearrange things. A shaking comes to put people back into the positions that are, that are supposed to be in. Back into the places where God will have them. And if you ask me, that's mercy right there. That's mercy. Because it means God is literally doing everything in his power to get you to be aligned with what you've been called to do on, on planet Earth. He has to now use a rod for you to get in the right place. Hallelujah. For you to finish well. Hallelujah. 
Satan has made certain positions desirable so that you will neglect your post and go after that which is said to be the, the most desirable thing. I'm here to let you know this right now. The one thing that is desirable, the one thing that will bring you contentment is God's position for your life, is God's assignment for your life, where he would have you be. That is where you will thrive without even having to bend over and do anything that the enemy wants you to do to get back. You won't have to strive. It will come naturally. Am I saying that you won't have to work hard? No. But you won't have to cut corners. You won't have to be corrupt. You won't have to be competitive. You won't have to strive. It is who you are. It will just flow and it will bless people because you are in your placement that has been designed by God. Hallelujah. May we understand these things as they take place. And here's another thing we need to understand. Your placement, where God will have you be, some people may not necessarily agree with you being in that position. Hallelujah. I've seen even with myself where God has spoken to certain individuals and said, that's my man, that's my God. I'll be like, who? Hey, no. You say, yes. That's my God for this particular assignment, for this particular position. That's my woman. That's my man. I say, but you are God. You see, that's all we have to do. We need to understand he's God. If he says it, even if you don't agree with it, if he's the one that is saying it, he is God. He understands more than you do. His plans are not your plans. His thoughts are not your thoughts. Therefore, what you think and what he thinks, completely different. But a wise woman and a wise man is one who says, you know what? I don't get it. But if you say it, I'm going to run with it. If you say it, I'm going to support it. Because you said, this is you telling me that this is you. This is what you are doing. So, I didn't see it coming, but you know what? If that's what you're doing, I'm going to run with it. If this is the man you have decided to be the president, I'm going to be, I'm going to pray for them to come into whatever alignment you need them to come into. Because when God identifies you, you are still raw. You are still in your raw state. But it doesn't mean that by the time you come into that position, you will still be the person that you are today. That's another thing we need to understand. Yes, he takes you as you are, but you don't remain as you are. I'm going to say that again. He takes you and he chooses you as you are, but you do not stay the same. You do not remain the same. You see, the other thing about being in God's will is that God, when you are in the right place, when you are doing what you're supposed to be doing, when you are where you are supposed to be, change will just come. Transformation will just come. Character will just change. Hallelujah. Image will just change. You will just begin to align with who you are. If he calls you and reveals that you are going to be a mammoth, for example, but at, the, at that time, Osenzo Bergagoji was did he call you as you were? Yes, he called you and you were a prostitute. But you don't remain a prostitute. It means he's saying, this is not who you are. And I'm going to bring out the real you that is going to be what? That is going to be directly aligned or synchronized with my spoken word over your life. Which means when we know that it is God, we are going to be shocked at the woman that you've become simply because now you no longer look like a prostitute. You no longer act like a prostitute. But now you are exactly what God said you are. God loves everyone. Let me just tell you that. God loves everyone. Every single one of us. He loves us. 
But he's not going to leave you the same. If you are going to serve him in any capacity, in his house and in the marketplace, you are going to have to resemble him. He is going to convert you. He, that is the reason why we have to go through the purging of the holy fire. The holy fire comes to get rid of this person that you had become that has nothing to do with the real you. And he comes to purge that. That is what the holy fire comes to do, to purge you for that which he has called you to be. When we understand that, we then bring balance to judgment and grace as we understand it. Because others are in the far left. They don't want to hear anything. If you are coming from the world and you are still struggling with some things, I'm still struggling with this thing. Something is wrong and you need to confront it. I'm talking about new people who still don't know God. They are babies in the Lord. We cannot come harsh upon such people and tell them, you know, how 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 baby you can't say that. God will give you wisdom on how to deal with it. But if you are going to be in positions of leadership, whether in the house of God or outside, understand there is accountability and there is expectation from God on how you carry yourself. Why? You are a leader. That means people are looking to you. When you are new, no one is looking to you. When you are not a leader, no one should expect much from you. You are still work in progress. I'm not saying you leave yourself there because if you do that, then you are delaying your own progress to becoming a leader in whatever capacity God would have you. But once God qualifies you into a place, a position of leadership, there is accountability and there is expectation. Believe that. Hallelujah. You have to be an ambassador. You have to carry the image of Christ. Am I saying you're going to be perfect? No. But you're going to see that God is working through this man. God is working through this woman. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Because as a leader, you speak without speaking. Your life as it is, is a template for others to follow. How is my life? You know, this part is private and how not private? Anything that you put out there. Now, whatever you may want to be private, you keep it private within private space. But once you put it out there, it's no longer your business. It is our business when it's out there. Hallelujah. When you step out as a leader, it becomes everyone's business because everyone is looking to you for direction. Everyone is looking to you for understanding how to move. Why? You are a leader. That's what leading means. It means I follow. That's why Paul said, follow me as I follow Christ. So you can't even say, well, it's, it's, it's none of their business what I do because we are all called to follow Christ. Yes, but as a leader, you, you, you simply say it. Follow me as I follow Christ. We can't hide from it. It's what it is. And in this time, God is also coming to set things right in his house. Hallelujah. Said judgment starts with my house. Like I said, we don't tarnish and we don't bash the church. We are the church. But we cannot ignore 
the much needed change that God is bringing in this hour. And God speaks through men. Hallelujah. So we cannot say, you know, if God is saying it, he will, he will say it in the sky. We'll just hear a loud voice in the sky and then we'll know that God is not pleased with certain things and how we are doing certain things. No, from the very inception, from the very beginning of time, God always spoke through men. God always sent messengers to relay his heart and to relay what he wants to do and what he, is he intends to do in that very time. Hallelujah. And I happen to be one of his messengers in this hour. I didn't choose to be one, but I happen to be one. And it's something that you and I are going to have to get used to. We're going to go into the word. And then from there, I'm going to close with the word that I had given you. Give you a closing of the word that I had given you on the 31st. Now listen very closely to what the Lord has been relating in this time. Hallelujah. He said, counterfeits fall, fall. And then he said, crystal clear. All things become crystal clear as I come in this time. Hallelujah. The Lord is saying everything is becoming crystal clear. In this time even those that are not discerning will be able to see we are at a point where now true colors in all of us are coming forth in such a way that you will not even question you will not even even be confused about someone's identity or someone's stand hallelujah everyone's stand in the season will be as clear as a crystal this is also for God to help us to make informed decisions on what we are going to follow and what we are going to be doing. Hallelujah. Because as much as leaders have this responsibility of being influential, you also have a responsibility over your life on what you follow. Because we have all sorts of leaders in this world. But you get to choose. You gravitate towards what is hidden in you. Hallelujah. So there's also accountability on your side to say that you were given options on what you can follow, what you can be inspired by, and what you chose was a reflection of who you are. Hallelujah. So you also have to check yourself if you are still in the faith. What are you fascinated with? What kind of men and women of God or supposed men and women of God do you gravitate towards? What do they teach? How do they conduct themselves? How are their lives private and public? When I say private, I mean the private that is made public and the public that is public. What are you inspired by in their lives? And some of them, you may even be called to them. The question is, in and within what you are following or what you are attracted to in their lives, what exactly are you attracted to? Which part of them are you attracted to? Are you attracted to the word of God that they speak or are you attracted to their personal life? There's a difference. If you are attracted to their personal life but you are not attracted to the word of God that they give you, something is wrong. Hallelujah. Something is wrong. We need to understand that we are not here. We don't come here. Just because we are coming through these kind of platforms doesn't mean that we, we are pretty much in the same category as reality shows and all these other worldly things. Where you want to keep up with my life, keeping up with the Kardashians, keeping up with the so and so, keeping, what are you keeping up with? What are you keeping up with? What are you fascinated about when it comes to your man or woman of God? What do you want to know? Do you want to know what they are driving? How much money they have? Who they are dating? Who they are married to? How they are? What are you attracted to? If you've been attracted to these things, God is saying it is time to come back. It is time to focus on what you're supposed to focus on. And that is the God or the Christ 
they are teaching you about, the Christ they are professing. And you also need to ask yourself, and whether we like, like I said, whether we like it or not, one way or another, your life also influences people. Because we also want to see, do you live what you preach? That's why I always tell people that this call, if God really called you, you know that at one point, or at the very beginning, you didn't want the call. Because you understand the heaviness and the expectations that come with that call. The accountability that come with this call. Hallelujah. It is not one of those things you, you just do to become famous or to be known or to be liked by people. In fact, when you are really doing what God has called you to do, most probably you are not going to have a lot of people liking you because you are going to have to tell them the truth. You are the truth bearer. Hallelujah. But nonetheless, you love them with the love of God. And the love of God, there is no love beyond the love of God. Hallelujah. So you need to introspect. You need to be honest with yourself and see where you really are. And how you are growing in the Lord. And ask yourself, wherever you are fellowshipping, are you growing in the wisdom of Jesus Christ? Are you growing in understanding the kingdom? Are you growing as a church in the ways of the Lord? Are you yearning more and more for Christ? Or have you become cold and cold and cold? Are you lukewarm? How long have you been lukewarm? What's making you lukewarm? And what are you doing about it? Hallelujah. You need to look at all of these things in this season and make some informed decisions about your life. Hallelujah. The word continues. He said, manifestation. It's a time of manifestation. Do you not feel it? Feel the weightiness of my manifestation. Feel it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Lord says, do you not see what I am doing in this time? Can you not perceive it? Do you not see the changes? Some people were, uh, there was a, an old lady the other day I was conversing with, and I was asking her how, you know, she spent her holidays. And she was like, Christmas, you know, and I, I, I get to understand that a lot of people have been saying the same thing. That it is not the same. Yes. But don't just stop at knowing and getting to notice that it is not the same. Ask yourself, why? Why is it not the same? These are the questions that you need to be asking yourself. You see, back then, our nation and other nations, we were not perfect. But there was evil was hibernating. It wasn't as, as prevalent as it is today. It wasn't on your face like it is today. The degree of wickedness and the level of wickedness that comes on the surface, it very much affects the atmosphere and everyday life, whether we believe it or not. Hallelujah. So, in the olden days, it, it wasn't the way that it is. In our nation, it would be very, very rare to see someone proclaiming themselves as gay and even going around during the day and just show, showing off and just, you know, very proud about it. It wouldn't, it's something that we wouldn't have even thought no thought would have come to anyone that is something that would actually think about putting in our laws. You wouldn't see a young person moving around holding a beer and just walking around with a bottle of beer on everywhere in the malls, all over the place, in parks. And they they hid themselves. No, we pity. Am I saying it was okay? It wasn't okay, but there was a level, a degree of honor and respect and reverence and acknowledgement that this is wrong. Therefore, I need to hide myself. 
The Lord says, do you not see the manifestation, the weightiness of my manifestation? Because he is here to deal with some issues, especially where his children are concerned. Because like I said, we are seeing the manifestation of darkness and light at the same time. That means God is coming to set things right with his own. Those that will say yes to him. Hallelujah. Because there is hope there. Hallelujah. He goes on to say, Vessels of dishonor, take a seat. Vessels of honor, arise. Speak. Arise. Wrong liaisons, I break. Connections, I break. Wrong connections, I break. I connect my own. Pursue as one. Pursue as one. Hallelujah. I believe that one is self-explanatory, so I'm just going to rush through because there's a lot to cover. He goes on to say, answers, answers. There is something that the Lord uh, has started to relate to me concerning Adam. Remember there was a word that God gave where he said, we are going to, what he's doing in this season of recovering our mind and our memory and our DNA in Christ Jesus. Because in our DNA, and in and within our DNA is information of who we are from the very beginning. And the Lord did say that we are going to start having an understanding of where we come from. From the very beginning of the times when we are still in the loins of Adam. And the Lord has started and he, he relayed this in a time I didn't expect it. It's not something I'm going to share now because it's heavy. Even for me, personally, I still need faith to believe. And I still need him to give me more understanding before I can relay it with you. But it's absolutely mind-blowing. One thing I can tell you is that technology is not a thing of today. Technology was there from the very, very beginning of time. And Adam was very, very much knowledgeable when it came to technology and, and how those things are going to affect us in understanding what the Lord meant when he said there is nothing superior to the human body and calling the human body a machine. Not to say that we need to merge with what we think or what we call machines. That's a counterfeit. I don't know what we, we can call AI, but it's a counterfeit of the real thing, which is you and your abilities in and within you as you are, without having a chip, without having any modifications to your DNA as a human as a human being. But just as you are, there's so much you can do and there's so much that God is going to do through you in this time, technology-wise. And we are going to see and appreciate technology from the other side or from the kingdom of light. Because God is not necessarily against technology, but he's against the kind of technology that is being made now, which is meant to what? To wipe out the human race or to divert humanity away from him. I mean, they are also they are not even hiding it. They are talking about the fact that you know this is so robust. Uh, it, it it makes you God and it makes you uh, it makes God you know useless and God is not needed because of this kind of technology. You are your own boss and you are your own God. And it, it, AI is basically God that trying to replace him with something that he has availed. And God is saying in this hour, he's taking us back to the beginning of time to remember, hallelujah, to remember what we are capable of. He continues to say, half time. Did I not say the second half is mine? Second half is mine. And the Lord said, look to me. There's a lot that is going to be happening between now and May that is going to be preparation for what God is going to be doing in the month of May. And he said it is huge, it is big, 
Therefore, you need to be focused in this hour. I'll repeat myself. You need to be focused and you need to be in the spirit in this hour. Because between now and then, there will be a series of instructions that God will be giving you. And for you to hear those instructions, you need to be a man and a woman of the spirit that is constantly listening to the spirit of God and what is relayed from the throne room. Hallelujah. So there will be a lot of instructions that God is giving you in this hour. Don't wait to understand them. Just make sure it's from God. Once you know it's from God, don't wait for understanding. Follow through and then the understanding will come later with the manifestation of the blessings that he's bringing with the following of those instructions. Hallelujah. Half the time, a lot of things that God instructs me to do, I never understand them when he tells me to do them. More than half the time, in fact. But every time after following through on his instructions, I'm always blown away at what God is doing. Hallelujah. So we need to understand God is transitioning us from a place of captivity into a place of what? Of the promises or the promised land. So you need to be very cooperative with him in this time and you need to be one who is always in the presence of the Lord. Hallelujah. Continues to say, yours is the kingdom, power and glory. Yes, to you, my children, yours is the kingdom, power and glory. Mine, for what is mine is yours, and what is yours is mine. This is covenant right there. This is marital covenant right there. For what is mine is yours, and what is yours is mine. There's another one that we're going to be talking about. We're not yet done with the, with the, marriage, series, the, the marriage series. Hallelujah. So we're going to pick up according to the, the leading of the Spirit when He wants us to pick up from where we left off. But one of the things you need to ponder on is this issue of prenup. Hallelujah. I need you to be praying about that because, like I said, we, we are dealing with uncomfortable topics in this time as God realigns us with his kingdom and the workings of his kingdom. And remember, God is the one that instigated this, this, this covenant called the Holy Matrimonial Covenant. Hallelujah. And beyond a man and a woman getting married in the physical, the, this is meant to point to higher realities of us being the bride of Christ and him being our chief husband. So God is bringing us back to an understanding of what this covenant really is. What is stated in this covenant. And we get to look into our own marriages and our own lives and we get to see whether we have followed God's template of marriage or whether we have followed the world's template of marriage which is not marriage to God. Hallelujah. So we need to understand the fullness of what it means to be married. Because it's a covenant, that means if it, there's a breach or something is not done the way that it's supposed to be, chances are it is nullified. Chances are it is what? It is void and nullified. Like I said, I don't want to get into that one now because it, it, it's, it, it, will, it will require a lot of thinking, a lot of consideration into a lot of things. And I also want to make sure that I'm heard properly and you are not left with a lot of questions or understanding me the wrong way. But one thing I can tell you is that truth is going to shake a lot of things in this season. A lot of things. Truth is going to shake up a lot of things because God is also one us to know and to understand that some of the places and some of the things where the enemy had trapped us through the law of God, you get to understand that what you thought was the law of God is the manipulated version of things. And now God gets to present his law in his fullness and you get to see the loopholes that the enemy, the cracks that the enemy had left behind where you can now see a way out in a situation where you didn't see a way out. Hallelujah. So, he said, mine, what is mine is yours, and what is yours is mine. Hallelujah. He continues to say, in other words, the Lord is saying, receive in this season, if you are part of his bride, if you are his own, he said, receive what is mine. My father gave me the kingdom, the power, the glory. Therefore, you as my wife, 
You as my bride, receive it because what's mine is yours and what's yours is mine. Therefore, be a partaker of what is mine. Be a partaker of the kingdom. Be a partaker of the power. Be a partaker of the glory. Why? Because you and I are one. Therefore, what is mine is yours and what is yours is mine. Hallelujah. Sila. Think about that even when it, it comes to marriage in the physical realm. He continues to say, it's a time, it's time for a hostile takeover. Hallelujah. He said, it is a time for what? A hostile takeover. So we love the scripture a lot where it says, the kingdom of God suffers violence and the violent take it by force. In this season, we are going to know what it means to take back what is ours by force. Because the enemy is not going to hand it over on a silver platter. Hallelujah. But God has a way for you to get it back. Hallelujah. It's a hostile takeover. This term is also used in the marketplace. Hallelujah. It is also used in business. And we know that in business, in ideal circumstances, when there is a hostile takeover, it doesn't necessarily mean you go to the other company, you beat up the owner and the CEO and everybody else, and then you assume those positions or you, you hold a gun, you hold them at gunpoint and you tell them to sign sign off that company and then you take it over. No, there are strategies that they use to take over a company. But you can tell when it's a hostile takeover because it means that those that have to give up the company didn't want to give up the company. Therefore, it was hostile how it was taken over. And the Lord is saying in this time, the enemy never wants to give you what is yours. He will never. Don't try to negotiate with Satan because he will never give it to you. No matter how nice you can be to Satan, he will never give you what he has stolen from you. You have to take it by force. Hallelujah. But there is a way. And the Spirit is here to give you the instructions on how to take it by force. By force simply means that he's going to have to give it up without wanting to. But he's going to have to be. He's going to be forced by the circumstances to give up what he has stolen from you. Hallelujah. He says, hostile takeover. I give you strength, four heads of iron. Bring them all under your feet, under your feet, equipped for victory, equipped to equipped for war. Hallelujah. He says, victory is yours. The big reveal of your true identity. Carry my terror. This is no time to be timid. Hear me. Confront the enemy upright. Advance like King David. Hallelujah. Again, this is a sermon on its own. We're going to get into that one of these days as well. But that is the word of the Lord. He says, I give you four heads of iron in this season so that you can face the enemy head on. Hallelujah. He continues to say, it's a, it's a war of words. Remember, before it gets physical, it is a war of words. Hallelujah. Before it gets physical, it is a war of words. And then he goes on to say, in case you didn't know, my name is Victory. Upon my arrival, it is over before it starts. Therefore, allow me to take over. Allow me to take over. That is the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He continues to say, now this is a warning. In fact, this is a prayer point. The Lord revealed something to me, but this is how I'll just put it for now. We need to pray for hospitals in this nation. We need to pray for hospitals. I believe even all over the world because we're in a time of globalization and whatever we're seeing happening in our own soil or in a different nation is what we have to be on the lookout for all over the place. So the Lord revealed something to me. 
Can somebody please come this side? There's something that I need. There's something that I need this side. Hallelujah. The Lord continued to say, we need to pray for hospitals because the enemy wants to turn them into mushwaris. Hallelujah. And he said specifically, public hospitals. We need to pray for public hospitals and clinics. Hallelujah. Can I have the, those notes? And that other screen. Thank you very much. The red one, yes. That one. And juice. Thank you very much. Uh, forgive me for that, beloved. I need the fullness of the word with me here. Yes, as I was saying, the Lord said we need to pray. Uh, for hospitals. You see, they, like I said, there's an unfolding of two agendas. God spoke about the fact that he's going to empty hospitals, not with people dying, but with people getting healed. Hallelujah. And that is for me and you to partner with him in bringing that about. Some of you are called, you have healing, the gift of healing. You are not even a pastor, you are not a pastor, you are not an apostle, you are not a prophet. But you are a child of God with a gift of healing. Hallelujah. Thank you very much. Like I said, you don't have any of the fivefold ministries. You are not called to any of them. But you have healing, the gift of healing. A serious gift of healing and in this time we're going to be praying for your gifts to come forth hallelujah in this season I'm going to be praying for your gifts to come forth because the Spirit of God is triggering your gifts because they're going to be needed we cannot all be in the same places at the same time so we need to understand as soldiers of Christ we are being called forth in this time to all be active wherever we are hallelujah that is how god is going to put the bricks on what the enemy wants to do that is how god is going to use you to save lives in this season some of you all of you in the season god is also heightening your sensitivity to know to knowledge or divine knowledge so that even when you are sitting next to someone that is contemplating suicide you will be able to know in and within yourself that this person is contemplating suicide and God will be able to speak through you in order to save that life. Hallelujah. Or somebody is pregnant even when it's not showing and they are contemplating on committing abortion and God will be able to give you the word of knowledge to know that this is what this person is planning to do. Speak to them. My wisdom will come forth and you will say the right things and they will keep the baby. Hallelujah. So you are needed in the field. And the field is everywhere you go. Anywhere you go is an opportunity for God to use you to save lives. Sometimes you'll be in a place and God will tell you, this person doesn't have food at the house. That's, that's your seed to me. You, you, are, you are giving it to me. You are provoking increase. Give them the little that you have. I'll give you the much that I have as your God. And that would have been the one thing that will show that person that indeed God exists. God saw them and God used you to help them in a time of need, even when they didn't say anything. How did they know my situation? It can only be God. See, that's the one thing I've seen. Anytime I obey God in giving, and you can tell that this person doesn't go to church, they never talk about God, they, they know nothing about The minute is a giving that is propelled by God, they will start to glorify God. Before they can say thank you to you, they will glorify God for whatever that you gave them. Because they can understand this is from God. That spirit man knows this is from God to me. It's not from this woman, but this is from God himself 
to me. God saw me or God sees me. Hallelujah. So we need to understand that about the season and about what God is doing in our lives in this very time. Like I said, many of you are going to be activated in the gift of healing because it is going to be needed. And while we're still in this one concerning healing, I need you to identify people that have taken the vaccine and pray for those people. Because the effect of some of them, the effect of some of them has already started. All over the world, people are being reported to just, people are dropping dead all over the world. People are just dropping dead all over the world. But it doesn't have to be the case. I know a lot of people I've prayed with, and it wasn't a special prayer. And when I say special, I mean it wasn't, you know, a prayer that needed for us to fast first or to pray for hours and hours and hours. It just needed our hearts to be connected to what we are saying. I know a lot of people that have taken the jab that I've prayed with and that you know, ask for forgiveness for their ignorance, for taking it ignorantly. And God has healed their bodies. They took communion and God has healed their bodies. And whatever effect, you see, once you understand the power of communion, you will understand what it does in your body. No matter the alterations that the enemy has done in your body, God can reverse it. Hallelujah. And it doesn't have to go too far. God can reverse it and your body can be set right. In what? In the DNA of Christ Jesus. Because when you drink his blood and you eat his flesh, you are saying, let my body take the likeness of the body of Christ. And Christ's body has no disease. It has no alterations of the DNA. Christ's DNA is God's DNA because he is God and he's a child of God. Therefore, when you take his DNA, by taking or partaking of his flesh and his blood and coming into covenant with him like that, that means that your body has divine immunity from whatever calamity that is going to befall planet Earth in this time. Whatever pathogen, there's nothing that has been designed that the body, that Christ's body cannot take or cannot repel. If it's something that is not compatible with his body, it will be repelled. Why? Because his body is the fullness of the perfection of God himself. Therefore, nothing can come against it. It's like partaking or taking up the body of God himself. That means nothing, no disease can attach itself to you. No bioweapon can attach itself to you or can take you out. The only time you'll be taken out is when your time on this earth is over and you have finished your assignment. Hallelujah. So if you're not in Christ and you have no intentions of coming into this kingdom, you better be scared because the enemy that is keeping you outside this camp, outside this kingdom is coming for you in all ways possible in this time. So you better be scared if you don't want Christ, if you don't want to be in this kingdom and you don't want his protection and you think you can protect yourself in and within your own capacity, you better be scared. But if you are in him, or if you are about to become one of his own, you are about to receive him as your Lord and Savior, you have nothing to worry about. If you are going to follow him and follow every instruction he gives you by the Spirit, you have nothing to worry about because you are a child of the Most High God and therefore you are above all the the plans of the enemy, the principalities, the powers, the strategies, and the weapons, all of it, you are above. And they cannot touch you from that place. Hallelujah. The other day, I saw a vision. Was it two weeks ago? And then, before I saw the vision, I was just sitting, sitting down, and then I started to uh, feel my chest feeling like it was being compressed. And I, I started to suffer. And then after that, I felt a headache on my right side. It was a very, very painful headache. It went all the way to the back. And then it would just come and go, come and go. And I knew that God was communicating to me something that the enemy was releasing in this time. 
And so, a few days ago, was it yesterday, I came into the knowledge uh, and the understanding that there have been so many cases of people uh, suffocating or people not being able to breathe as of late. And I believe the symptoms were similar to what I was feeling at the time. And the Lord said, there's something they have released in the air, in the atmosphere. But in the spirit realm, this is how I saw it. I saw a snake wrapping itself around a body. And then it started to squeeze and squeeze and squeeze. Remember that the enemy is a serpent. So what you see happening to your body in the physical is by reason of what is happening in the spiritual realm, what has been released in the spirit realm. They may do it or the enemy may use individuals to carry it out in the physical realm. But where it matters the most, which is in the spirit realm, that is what I saw. The snake was now what is snaring itself and wrapping itself around a body and then it began to squeeze. What was he doing? He was trying to snuff out life. And God is saying, we need to speak and we need to pray. When God reveals, it means that it is game over when we speak against it. Hallelujah. It's, if you just know what is happening on ground without having seen what is happening in the spirit realm, then it becomes difficult to defeat the enemy at a larger scale. You are going to deal with those issues from an individual level. Hallelujah. As the attacks come with different people, you're going to have to just cast out, cast out, and then they come again, cast out. But once you have seen what has been released in the spiritual realm, then as a body, collectively, we are able to shut it down. Hallelujah. And after that, I saw another snake at this church. It's a big church. I saw the snake coming into this church and just slithering its way by the entrance. It was just about to go into the entrance of this church. And this snake was black and white. It had these two stripes of black and white. And I believe when it comes to colors, with the past experiences I've had where God was showing me something about snakes, uh, sometimes even when he, he was to warn me about certain individuals, I will see the snake with a certain color and then the individual will come wearing those very colors. But I'm not saying in all seasons or in all occasions that is the case. You need to listen to the spirit and whether the spirit is confirming what you saw or he's saying something completely different. Hallelujah. Sometimes that snake, the colors can represent an organization. It doesn't always refer to individuals. It can refer to an organization that the enemy is using at that time to come like a serpent against a people. So God is saying to us in this time, the enemy has released yet another uh, serpentine spirit that is meant to snuff out the breath of life from humanity again. But the Lord is saying we have seen it and we have the power to shut it down before it spreads or before it takes over or before it has its grip on us the way that COVID did. God is saying we can shut it down. Hallelujah. So with this snake that I saw wanting to enter this, this church, and I believe that it was also representing the church as a whole, that there's something that the enemy wants to bring. And from, you know, uh, how we normally associate red and black, we know that the enemy, you know, in cartoons and whatnot, when they want to depict Satan, they depict him with, these two colors. Not that when you wear those colors, you are satanic. But in this particular instance, it's like this snake was symbolic of Satan wanting to come into the church in a different way once again. But I saw myself crushing the head of that snake before it entered the house of the Lord. And God is saying, us, the children of God, because in that dream or in that vision, I was symbolic of the church or the bride of Christ. He's saying, we have the power to crush serpents. We have the power to crush his head. You are the one that is called to crush his head. You are the seed that God has been talking about. From the very beginning in Genesis, you are that seed. And you get to crush his head. Hallelujah. And God is saying, in this time that we are in, 
That is why he's calling you to the highest of places so that instead of you being the one to suffocate, because you need to understand something, there is what we call in the atmosphere the snake line, where if you take a snake above that line, it starts to suffocate and it will die because it's not able to breathe above that line. But what do we see? We see that any time when we are below that line, the enemy or the serpent is the one that is able to what to suffocate us because we are not of this world and any time we want to live like this world we suffocate and we die and god is saying you have the ability to shut it down instead of him terrorizing you in his territory take him to your territory where you will not be able to breathe and what is that territory? Is when you allow the Spirit of God to have His way with the entirety of your being. That is how you will be above the snake line. And that is how you will be able to take out all the serpents in your life in this season. Hallelujah. He continues to say, So please pray for hospitals. I don't know, but well, I know, I know part of it, but, you know, pray, pray that it won't prosper. We will live, you will live, I will live, our children will live, hallelujah. We will live, why? Because we are going to fight, and we are going to stand in line with Christ, and his plan, we are going to execute it by the empowerment of the Spirit, and we are not going to give up and give in. That is who we are. We are going to advance like David when he advanced against that giant from the Philistines' camp. And we are going to take him out with one shot. Why? Because the Spirit is with us. Hallelujah. And we take him out with the word. It doesn't even have to get physical because we will take him out with the word before it can even get to that place. Hallelujah. You need to fight in this season. And the best way to fight is with your spoke, the spoken word. The word of the Lord. Prayer. Praise. Worship. Hallelujah. Thanksgiving. That's how you fight. And standing for the ways of God. That's how you fight. He says, enigma. He says, in this season, you shall be called an enigma. An enigma is when you are mysterious or difficult to understand. Here's the thing we need to understand. When you walk by the spirit of truth, Holy Spirit, you become an enigma. People will never understand your life. And you know why that is important? Because familiar spirits are always around people. So when they don't understand you, that's an indication that familiar spirits have no idea what is happening in your life. Therefore, there is nothing they can do about it because they don't know what your next move is because you are an enigma. Why are you an enigma? You, in fact, you are not the enigma. You are an enigma by reason of the enigma itself which is in you, which is the spirit of God or the Holy Spirit or Holy Spirit because he's a person. He's the mysterious one. He's the one that you will never understand no matter how much you may try to understand him. Sometimes he may move in a certain way for a certain period of time and you may be tempted to think you know him. And then once you begin to think that you know him, he comes in a different way and you get to see that you don't really know him. Until you give up trying to understand him and you just follow him. And you just follow the instructions he gives you and you stop trying to explain your life to people because the more you try to explain, the more it just gets weird. Have you ever experienced that? I remember my eight years of walking with the Lord. I used to try and make people understand no, like I can explain my life. This is what's happening right now. And I'll explain it. And then I'll even tell them what will be happening in future and whatnot. And then once I think I have it on lockdown and I tell people this is what I do, you know, uh, business-wise, this is me, this is me, this is where I am, this is where I live, this is... And then I get an instruction, move. 
I get an instruction. Uh, we're done with that. Now we're doing this. And I'm like, wait. But I've already told people this. And he said, well, that was on you. That was, that was all you. I didn't tell you that this was, this was permanent. You, you are going through training. So I'm taking you through the different things. And you get to live them out as practicals. You get to live them out as practicals. So some of you, you are still going through training. And God is taking you through practicals. And then when you don't understand that, you, you start telling people, this is what I'm doing. And then tomorrow, you're not doing it anymore. You're doing something else. And then they'll be like, Now when I tell you, I'll show you what I'm doing. Sometimes you even question yourself to say, but this doesn't look good. I look like I'm all over the place. You are not all over the place. Oja mo practically niya home economics. Oja na mo oya design and technology. How oja mo oya ne wa wuba wa wuba. How oja mo oya. And then once you are done with the University of God, that's when He will show you how all of these things come together. You see, if you want to walk successfully in your walk with the Lord and you want to be stress-free, don't try to explain your life to people because they'll never get it because you don't get it. It is for the spirit to know and for you to form. But in the end, you start to see how it all comes together. And it's so beautiful how it comes together because that's the thing. God's plans are not limited by you or the expectations of men. So when you thought that first practical was more than enough, when it blew you away and you thought this is it, and God was saying, but this is just one facet of what I want to do with your life. So I've given you a hint on this one or I've taken you through the introduction of this one. Now I'm taking you through this one. That's why he said, I will do exceedingly abundantly beyond anything you can imagine. Hallelujah. And you may not even understand how it, it all comes together. It may all look so scattered and, and it looks like it's not related. There's no way you can have a business that is one from all of these things that you've been learning. God says, because you don't know me, you are saying that out of your own understanding and your own capacity and the limitations that have been set by the enemy, by reason of the systems of this world and how you think business works according to this world. But guess what? I'm calling you forth as a pioneer. And as a pioneer, it means you are introducing something new. It means what used to be impossible, you get to make it possible. I introduce it through you and you get to make the impossible possible. So this year, you need to learn how to free free fall into the hands of Holy Spirit. Allow him to take you through the journey of your life. Allow him to, to help you explore. You see, once I decided, this is, I'm going to treat this as an adventure. I'm going to pull all this weight. Because it's not like you have a problem with it. You just have a problem with what people think. That's what you have a problem with. You don't have a problem with following God. You have a problem with what people think. You are still in his, his university. That's between you and God. Enjoy your life. And you will see strength will begin to come back to you. Because now you have taken off this huge garment. People's expectations. This and this, the environment's expectations, society's expectations, the systems of this world's expectations. What about God's expectation? What about that one? So, get ready to become an enigma. Get ready for people to say, I don't get you. I don't get her. I don't get him. Yes, it means you're on a good path. If they've already started saying that about you, you're on a good path. That means Holy Spirit has some degree of control over your life. You still need to give him more control. But it's a good sign. Monitoring spirits are only able to monitor people who are predictable. People who are understandable. 
People that you can say, I know him. I know her. Those are the people that monetary spirits have no problem monitoring and sabotaging. But if you move by the spirit, who is like a wind? No one knows where he comes from or where he's going. He, but he's always on the move. Hallelujah. That's the thing. When it's God, no one can get it, but they can see that things are happening. But they don't get it, but they can see that things are happening. Well, it's a move. He's not stagnant. You can catch things that are stagnant, but the spirit is not stagnant. Therefore, he's always on a move. So you can see there's movement, there's progress. May not be physical or financial progress for you, some of you, at once, at first, but you can see there's progress. There's improvement in character. There's improvement in the way they carry themselves. There's improvement in this, and, but I just don't get them. There are certain areas I don't get but the fruit is there, but I just don't understand where this fruit is coming from because it looks like this person is all over the place. It is from the Spirit of God. Hallelujah. Goes on to say, lament for the wicked in this time. Full strength of my wrath upon the wicked in this time. We should lament for them. When God continues to say something over and over again, it means that you, you cannot begin to understand the degree of what he's saying. Hallelujah. That is why when such words come, when you move by the Spirit, you can even start to groan and, and start to weep, even though you don't have the full capacity in and within your mind of what God is getting ready to do. But your spirit, because he knows, you can just find yourself weeping without the full comprehension of why you are weeping. Hallelujah. He says, tell my people, seek me. I shall be found by you. For I am the rock. For I am the rock. I am immovable. But you can, but you can move towards me. My spirit is present to help you locate me. To help you to locate me is my Holy Spirit. Spirit of truth. Then he says, methane, methane, nitrogen gas, aloe. Then he said, they will, the more they pollute the air, the bolder you shall get. The more you will utter my word in its raw, in its rawness confusion in that camp. The Lord is making us understand that there's a pollution of the air that has been planned. I don't know whether it's, it's already being done or it's something that they are planning to do in the near future, but from what I've been seeing around, it looks like it's something that might uh, already be on the move. Hallelujah. But the Lord is saying, for those of you that have been following the instructions that I've been giving you concerning your diet, concerning taking communion on a daily basis, concerning such instructions, you will not be touched by what is being released in this time, but rather you will become stronger and bolder in your, in your move or in your conviction of who God is and in you uttering the word of the Lord in its rawness. And he says that is going to cause confusion in the enemy's camp because he's expecting you to become weaker and weaker. Remember what I said in the spirit realm, it's a snake that is what? Trying to snuff the life out of you. So when you are weak, you can't speak. So that is what the enemy is targeting. He's trying to target us to stop declaring the word of the Lord because it is the word of the Lord that is weakening his camp. Hallelujah. It is truth that is weakening his camp. And so he wants to shut it down. And the only way he can be able to shut it down is if we don't follow God's instructions. Because outside God's instructions, that means we're on our own. And any, the enemy can do anything that he wants. But someone who is following 
the instructions of God is someone that is blameless and therefore there is no condemnation against them and there is no harm that can come upon them. Only strength and power shall come upon such an individual. He continues to say, every attempt will catalyze my move. Hallelujah. Then he said, Mililuna. How dare you even think you can wipe my name from the face of the earth? How dare you? I will remind you that you are a mere human, dust for dust, dust for dust. You dare worship fallen creation instead of the living God. I will show you that you are mere dust. Outside of me, you cease to exist. Outside of me, you cease to exist. Those who stand for my name in this time will be untouchable. Hear me, untouchable. Call upon my name. Stand for my name. Lefatsile, kelani. Kelani, lefatsile. Kelani. Nkutwele, kisimuruze, kubuseta mola wani. Ke busetsa mola wa me mo le fatselile ke utlule ditapelo tsa bana bane tsa bane banake ke busa mola wa me ba no ring khalong tlhoki lwa ithalogane le tlhalihile go heta modimo wa lona mmupi wa lona selelo sa lona sa go thomola pelo ba ba mo le fatse e senna Bale kali hile mkumpeta. Kele mupi walona. Lota ama bale fati. Ese mna. Kibua le lona hamu. Le hape. I will remind you that riches of the wicked have wings. You will see in the season that riches of the wicked have wings. They will begin to fly off. They will begin to disappear like mere vapor before their eyes. Yes, fear shall grip the lives of many, many who envied the wicked and their riches, as they see the manifestation of my move, my wrath, return to me, my people, return now, return to me now. For my heart is with children. My heart is with the voiceless. My heart. I weep for the voiceless. I weep for the children. Tell them, tell the wicked leaders that to refuse to repent from their wicked ways, theirs shall be the death of a dog. Theirs shall be the death of a dog. They shall die like dogs soon. Wicked leaders, you you will move soon. Wicked leaders, you will have no allies. Soon you will scatter at the signs of my wrath. You will scatter from my sight. Yes, yes, water, water, water. I cleanse with water. I purge with fire. Moment of truth. Moment of truth. Peace, peace. You will only know truth. You will only know peace upon declaring my truth. My children, from now on, I deprive you of my peace if you do not speak my truth. Hallelujah. I'm being reminded of Jeremiah where he said, when I tried to keep quiet, his word was shut up in my bones like fire. Hallelujah. Such will be for those that will try to hold back and that which the Lord wants to speak it will come out one way or another because you will lack peace by not declaring the truth and the word of the Lord. My peace, my truth. My peace, my truth. Books have been opened. The one time there is silence in heaven is upon the opening of the books. Even butterflies are still at the opening of my books. Not a single thing moves in heaven and the honor and the respect of the opening of my books. 
Did I not say it is time for judgment and reward? Books are now open. Servants of the Most High God, get ready. Get your vessels ready. Speak my judgment, my reward. Echo my heart. Echo my heart. Echo my heart to the nations. Hallelujah. He goes on to say, sellouts. Sellouts, receive your reward. Sellouts, receive your reward. Addis Ababa, Addis Ababa, come into focus. This is the capital of Ethiopia. The Lord says, come into focus. I believe we're going to be seeing some things happening in that area very soon. He goes on to say, strange. Strange documents will be found in the White House. Strange documents that will shock many will be found. There will be no denying of those connected to the documents. No denying. There will be no denying. I'm being reminded of a word God gave me in 2020 concerning this nation where he, he spoke to me about angels. I, I stand to be corrected by the records. I believe it was 24 angels. Was it? No, 140. Thank you, Holy Spirit. It was 140 angels that had been dispersed into corridors of power in this nation to bring forth files that had been hidden. Some of them have been shredded and God is going to put them together in this time. It will be shocking to many who thought they had gotten rid of those files that they will be coming forth in this time because angels are the ones that are bringing them forth in this very time. So the word of the Lord over the White House is as thus, hallelujah. He goes on to say, Nori. Nori means peaceful, Nisha. And then he said, night. We are going to be seeing a lot of peaceful nights in this season. For those of you that have been tormented in the nighttime, God is saying, peace shall come upon you in this season as you follow me and as you stay true to my word and my ways. As you do what I've instructed in this hour, which is to praise me like never before. Hallelujah. Part of your prayer in this season is praise. Praise God. Dance before him. Praise him. Do not hold back. And you will see what he will do for you in this very time. Hallelujah. I must say, in this season, I strongly, I strongly, strongly recommend listening to Victoria Orenzi. Pastor Victoria Orenzi, uh, her voice is just tiny. She's seasoned for this hour. I'm not saying she's the only one, but I am saying as a recommendation of one of the people you can listen to in your time of devotion in this hour, I highly recommend that sister. She is anointed for the hour. Hallelujah. The word of the Lord continues. He says, souls, 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 souls. Only my way. Only my way results in souls being saved. Only my way. Choose my way. My way. Hallelujah. Then there was a very strange vision that I had. I'll get into it uh, some other time to give you more context. But it was very funny. Uh, in this vision, the eagle, I just wrote this, the eagle shall bring back, shall bring back and awaken the lion that had turned into a monkey. Ponder on that one. The eagle shall bring back and awaken the lion that had turned into a monkey. It was, it was hilarious. I think if I knew how to, to do animation, I would have cartoons uh, to demonstrate what I was seeing in the spirit realm. And I think the spirit was showing them in, a, in, in an animated form as well. It was, it was hilarious. But a very strong message there. The eagle shall bring back and awaken the lion that had turned into a monkey. Hallelujah. Remember, we still have to go back to the to the word of horns of power, which is very timely as well. Uh, I have given you a bit of insight concerning the north, south, east, and west, and what they represent in terms of the powers. Hallelujah. And uh, how it's also uh, indicated in the national emblems of the powers thereof that are in those regions as well, where the eagle, the, the lion, the ox, and the man are concerned. But that is for another day. 
He continues to say, doors open one by one, greener, greener pastures. My team, my team, greener pastures. You are going to partake of what God is doing in this time if you team up with the people that you are supposed to team up with. And I must say this, even as you see yourselves in this platform, you are a team. Hallelujah. I'm not saying this is the only team you have, but you need to understand that just the fact that you are the ones that have responded to what God is doing over here. It's not the fullness of what he's doing, but this is what he's doing over here. It means that your spirit was able to identify your team. Hallelujah. Your spirit was able to identify the assignment you are a part of. And you need to start thinking about why you find yourself attracted to this ministry and to the word God is giving through this ministry. And you need to start thinking about your assignment as well as a child of God and as a part of this team that God has brought together. Hallelujah. And the Lord says when you, when you come together as a team, when you work together as a team, when you do your part and I do my part, God is saying greener pastures for all of us. Hallelujah. He continues to say cross, cross, cross activation. For those of you that had brought your children to the barracks, if you remember, I had been given an instruction by the Lord to put a cross on them to say, uh, be sealed by the Spirit in the name of Jesus Christ. And if you read Ephesians uh, chapter 1, Paul talks about the sealing or being sealed by the Spirit for the day of redemption. The sealing of the Spirit also speaks of the sealing that keeps you or exempts you from judgment or exempts you from calamities that come upon planet Earth now and then as part of judgment or periodical judgment that has to come in order to purge the world now and then. So in the times of Moses, they put the blood of the lamb on their doorposts and in our time where we have been redeemed by Jesus Christ, anytime you receive him, the seal of the spirit, the spirit comes to seal you on your forehead for the day of redemption. Hallelujah. That is why during the time of the mark of the beast, the beast wants to seal you with his own hallelujah on your hand or on your forehead. And if you read Revelations, you're also going to find out that God also sealed his own on their foreheads and on their head. Hallelujah. So you need to understand one way or another you are sealed by someone. Hallelujah. But the Lord says the cross that is on your forehead has been activated. Why? Because now there is calamity, there is judgment that is coming upon planet earth. And you have to have the seal of Christ on your forehead. It's not, an, it's not a visible seal or sealant, but it's there. Hallelujah. When you received him and you received the gift of Holy Spirit, the Spirit came to seal you for the day of redemption. And God is saying, those that have it, it has been activated for this time, in this time, because it's a time of judgment once again. So that the angels that come to execute judgment will see it and they will pass you over. Hallelujah. He continues to say, come bearers, get ready for your assignment. Support my will. Arise, arise of my people, arise. He continues to say, a major blow to the enemy's plans. A major blow. The Lord say, every time you follow his instructions, you are causing a serious blow to the enemy's plans against your life. You see, some of you don't understand that every time you follow God's instructions, maybe someone had planned to kill you and the instruction you followed resulted in you being able to escape that plan to kill you. Hallelujah. There are so many plots that happen on a daily basis against your life. And it is the instructions of God that keep you from falling into those traps. So you need to understand that when God instructs you to do something, it is for you. It is not for him. It is for you. Because you never know what your enemies are planning against your life. Hallelujah. Then he continues to say, advance, advance. No man, none can imagine 
my next moves. This word kind of shook me a little bit because even I myself can tell that there's a level of, there's an expectation within my members, a very high expectation. And at the same time, God is not revealing the fullness of how and what he's about to do. But it is big, beloved. It is big and it is huge. Hallelujah. In this season, what God is getting ready to do, we will not be able to trace it. We will not be able to tell from where it's coming from, but it is big. That's all I can tell. It is big. It is big. Your role is to follow the instructions and you will see the big thing that God is doing in your life in this very time. Some of you are going to come into positions you never imagined in your entire life. Even when you thought of what it would be or the ideal success according to you, it doesn't come close to what God is getting ready to do in this season. Hallelujah. It goes on to say, be my supply chain. Be my supply chain. Major moves. Hallelujah. It says, be my supply chain. This one, we're going to get into it some other time. It's a, it's, it's a word on its own concerning even what he means by us teaming up according to what he wants to do to come against the plans of the enemy against humanity in this time, be it with uh, diseases, be it with shortage of food and all of these things and how we are to curb that and how we are to be used by God to supply humanity with what it needs in this very time to be of use of good use to be a light in its real sense hallelujah he continues to say record the things to come what god is getting ready to do in this time he says it is worth recording the same way that acts was recorded or the acts of the apostles and the church in the beginning were recorded he said record things to come hear me everything i do in this season is worth recording record my acts 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 get ready for my move my move paving way for my move countless acts countless acts countless limitless acts of the lord hallelujah what a time to be alive he continues to say mystics, mystics, and so have my mysteries begun, my mysteries, hallelujah. Mystics are supernatural or hidden or visionary uh, things that happen, hallelujah. So he continues to say Capernaum and Gilead, these are places in Israel, I believe there are so many places God has been citing that are in Israel. I believe we're going to see a lot of action, a lot of things happening in Israel that will be worth noting in this very time. God continues to say, sockets of my power, connector. Then he said, lethal move on my side. A lethal move on my side. There, there is a serious war. It's like they're in a boxing ring. Even though there's no fight, really, that is taking place. The enemy and his minions and us and our God. And God is saying, he just launched in this time a lethal move. Hallelujah. He said, a lethal move have I made this day. Lethal move. Oh, you have no idea. Hallelujah. Lethal move. See me. See me at thy word. Then he said, trees fall, trees rise. I know for some of you who may be new to this uh, page, you may be wondering what is happening. This is the word of the Lord that he speaks through my mouth when I'm in prayer. And then it is recorded by a scribe. And then I get to share it with you to know what the Lord is saying. And if you've been following the word that we've been giving, you get to, to understand the flow of things and the flow of events because it's like a continuation of that which he's doing. He keeps us uh, updated in that which he's doing in our lives 
in every single season. So it's a privilege to hear so much word from the Lord. Uh, it's not something that we can even qualify for with works. It's a gift and it's timely, it's needed because we're in a time where we need to hear what God is saying and he has availed his word generously so in our time. We are blessed. Hallelujah. He continues to say wisdom. Wisdom. Beloved, receive wisdom in this season because you're going to need it. And we're going to talk about wisdom so that we can get an understanding of what wisdom is as opposed to what we have been made to believe is wisdom. Because there's a way we understand wisdom and then there's a way that wisdom is truly is. Hallelujah. And Solomon's story concerning the two women is one of the stories that we are going to use to dissect this uh, crucial instrument called wisdom that we really, really need in this hour more than ever before as the Gentile uh, church that has been restored back to their God. And our number one assignment uh, requires the weapon called wisdom. Therefore, if it's our number one weapon, we have to have a full understanding of what it is and how it works. Hallelujah. He said, white as snow, days of fulfillment, pulling wealth, power, be the supply chain. God is getting ready to give us serious wealth. I don't know where it's going to come from. Don't ask me. I don't know how it's going to come, but it's coming. And it's with purpose. People are going to need to be fed. People are going to need to be clothed. Uh, we're going to have to take over certain systems. We're going to have to take over uh, the health system uh, to help immensely with the health system, with uh, education, the education of our children. We're going to have to help with uh, the upkeep of our environment, our communities. God is not helping. He's not happy with the filth that is all over. He's not happy with the filth that is all over. And he's going to give us an understanding of how to clean our environment, our communities, so that his spirit may once again flood our communities. Listen, Mudimu Harate Lesu. Mudimu Harate Lesu. Lately, people, they think, I, I think, I think, I think, I think, I have a thing with surfaces. I don't want to see dirt. I don't want to see dust uh, in surfaces. And I know that it's inspired uh, by the Spirit as well. The Spirit of God does not like dirt at all. At all, at all, at all. So sometimes to other people it may look extreme, but it's not. It's how we were supposed to live. I mean, before, we don't like a kitchen scheme. I don't think it's 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 a kitchen scheme. Because if you maintain it, if you continue to always wipe it, it remains clean. It remains the way that it was when you bought it from the shop. Hallelujah. So it's, 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 it's not normal. Some of the things that we have normalized are not normal. And God wants us to come out of those places of normalizing things that are not normal. To have in our communities, cans and, and papers all over the place. It's not normal. That's why in other countries where we love to go, you will not see a paper. You will not see littering. You will not see any of these things along the road. That's why you love those places. It indicates to you that deep down, the true you loves cleanliness. But you have been told or you have been programmed to believe in your own space, it shouldn't be like that or it's not supposed to be like that. The only time your, your windows are clean, Hallelujah. 
but we don't do that anymore. You don't, you mock once in three weeks, two weeks, in a week, in two days. Your toilet, you don't wash it. Some of you maybe, I don't even know why God wants me to go into detail about these things. But we might as well touch on them. And you see, it's cleanliness that attracts wealth as well. That attracts, because wealth starts with your mind. When your environment is clean, your mind is clear, and you are able to receive the blueprint of heaven on what is possible in your life. Cleanliness brings about possibilities. Hallelujah. Because now your mind can receive that which brings life. Because cleanliness also, it improves and promotes life. Hallelujah. While dirt, on the other hand, promotes and invites spirits, unclean spirits. That's why they're called unclean spirits. It's because they cannot be in a clean place. They have to be in an unclean place because they are unclean spirits. But the spirit of holiness, of truth, is a clean spirit. Therefore, it must be in clean spaces. Hallelujah. What's your name? It has to be. Hallelujah. 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 Some of these things you may take them for granted. It's like what I was talking about this morning about Hongan. If we don't get to finish the word, I, I can always give you the word on Wednesday. Hallelujah. On Friday, I'm going to give you tomorrow off because of uh, the season that we're in. I understand some of you are going back home and all sorts of things to get our lives back in production mode. So it's like what I was talking about this morning. It's something that the Lord actually communicated in a very profound way to me yesterday when I was in prayer. And he said, I, I asked him, and I knew that he was the one that was propelling me to ask him. I said, Lord, you've been saying light up for so many years. And I know that you said it's impartational and there's, there's always a, a, a more light that you are imparting and that is coming forth from the inner man into the outer man. But there has to be more to why you always emphasize it so much. And there's a name that he calls me and then he would call me with that name and say, light up. And when I asked him yesterday, he said, what, 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 what do you normally say to someone who enters a room and they are smiling and they are welcoming, their face is welcoming and, and all of that? You say, when you describe such a person, you say they light up the room, right? You say they, they light up the room. They have this thing where they can, they just light up the environment. Everywhere they go, they just, they just light up the environment. And he said, how do people normally respond to people who light up environments? And what do you think that lighting up is? He said, you, you need to understand something. Humanity doesn't even know. In so many things that they speak, they speak things that relate to deeper truths that they are ignorant to. He said, they, when you say someone lights up the room, you're talking about light. That means they're allowing the light that is within them, my light, to shine forth. And when my light shines forth, it what? It brightens up your countenance. Isn't that what we're talking about? That the countenance of Christ is so bright that it's just light. That means he is so lit up the smile, the goodness, the joy, the peace that is upon him is so great that the level of light that is being seen on him is so great that it's just a light. But as for me and you, you become what? When you smile, we say you have lit up. You, 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 are, you, you light up your environment. And God says, who can resist a man 
that carries light. Who can resist a man that carries light? You've seen salespeople who just come and they have that thing, they have that vibe. Hearts and even when they, they found you low, down and out, and you are just bored with your work and whatever it is, at an amanari kisa di chocolate. Ili mo gay nalo kisa di chocolate. Azo ko stationing ako talaga di chocolate. Tabas si mula ko balan ako. Hey, when you are king maweti, onze jan ako. Hey, balan maweti. Mana ako zatanga, ako zatanga. Usi mo lao si kasi kanya na red. And you will feel bad if you don't buy. There's why we touch up on now who had a low regular scene. It's a one now that I'm killing a woman now who walk up and it's the energy and everybody. And that's an example of how this opens doors. You see, the enemy wants us to be comfortable in always frowning. Look on now, see, now let's all tell her you can't go and I will go on a lot. We go, oh, by the way, I'm going to go to the back. I'm going to go back to the ring. How is your man who swearing I was so negative? And we were all guilty of this at one point. I remember when I was growing up, when I was a when I was a kid. Nigger at home, Madame Homas. Nigger when I got nigger at home, Palomet, making another big Palomas time. Now, was it when they get a girl? I was I was very young. I think I was doing like standard four or something. Standard three. Standard three. Got pinky and a big Palomas time. I loved climbing trees when I was young. There was one time uh, I was upset with my grandmother. I think she took she took my sister's side or something. I was they don't only know that I was there because I started, I started laughing at them. But my point is, every time King Haji, who who was suffering? It was me. Can man get suffer? Can we call him? Can we do more stuff? 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 People have moved on about the availability TV. When on to how I do. Who is suffering? It's you. How Satan come around? How can we decide to say the Babu in Bogabaho? How can we look at the Babu in Bogabaho? How can we look at the Babu in Bogabaho? But God is saying to you today, Nanu Roha, Mabati Abule. Nanu Roha. Ong ane tayo mo na ako, ong ane tayo mo sa iba ako. Lero ba na yung moro ba na ba yung moro ba na ba? But you miss your your wife, you miss your husband. You want to have intimacy with your husband. You want intimacy with your wife. Miss at ano kara? Okay po, okay po kano ka ba ng rulo? Sige ka, but you are suffering. Hallelujah. May mga bill ng little children in this season. Leba. Leba, mudi mo tayo ko hamay mamae. Loko roskar, balba tayo ko hataga. Hmm hmm. O tayo ko hamay. You see, there's wisdom in this kingdom. There's wisdom. God knows how He will deal with them in whatever it is that you deem as unfair in your relationship. God knows how He will deal with them. But it's not your place, because every time you do it to show that it's not your place, you are unhappy. You are. You don't have peace. How long ala? Who could say that peace? Haba ko jese ma di ko mosolo. Agar ko ay nonsa ni mosolo, ko nawa tiyo ko jana mosolo. Uska uska bangali. Kio man nasa ingali loko. Kio man nasa na jisan menta ko izor malupo ako jamant. Hmm. So si mga ni di na na jesho hello bori niyami malupo ay izor sosi hilem kaso sa mga kina tama dia ako. E uba ka ni madia. Mbi ano haba ni lor house izor tuga si loko kumale po haga kahan si little boy izor. Lese la gatte, le bana ou simo la bana ou, le skala de la goza la tenye. Bana habet sur baya nou baye raya, na kwe li nga le la nene le ba tenye mou te kale nga lo loka, ke kwa nga nou kote mba 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 mba. This is some level of immaturity that just follows you in your 50s, your 40s, your 60s. Some of you le ba tona hera mou 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 haka mata, me habi bisa, kao bu isi, you, you, your older sister, she's 70, you are 66. 
kaliwisan, lidan sa bana munting, bana ka tayo ba nabas kaliwisan? Because of something that happened 20 years ago. Madimara, no, it's enough. And yet you are going to church. You are going to church. Wala mo itatala mo dumaw ako, eh na mo dumaw mo itatala mo, are ngarulog. Ngarulog. Are ngarulog. Okay. Ngarulog ay hala, talan, kusya, me, lo kusina lala, hasibu kwete, kusina lala, hasibu humi. Kura, hapon na si Peres is Gloria, si ka kusina lala, wawa. Are ba kanye, munye nyo wo, ubule mo di ko, aw, re rapid. Mujimar jam, it's action time. Halenu. Kona ni tuwa tayo ng kwa, di kubula la di koro, osa buita. Osa rabele, o rabete yan ng kwa, kona li ta tete ng kwa, hana kao di dewa. Kwa siyama, e mo kwa tama sinte, e mo kwa di tena, mo se mo se suwa jowa, di tena mo kwa so. E ta ye ma hana kwa, nubo kita wari kia tuwa si te, rata ba kanya, hana suwa ni tewa kwa ba kanya te. Let me check if there's any pressing word so that I can give you your evening back and then we will receive the rest of the word uh, on Friday. Hallelujah. I'm just checking for you if there's anything pressing uh, so that the rest... I can really not mention the word. I can't even mention the word. I can't even mention the word. This kingdom we learn. We learn along the way and God gets to to help us. And you know, usually usually give up to the battle. They are lively people. Because I, I was I was a very lively child, but it was like there was no balance there. It was either I was very lively or I was off. So this this balance that God wants to bring. I love my alone time. Uh, now there's balance. There's a difference. When I want my alone time, I, I'm just having my alone time. Yeah, because I'm a little out there. But ninga mo yone tota mo di mara arjo mo ko yone pasalmani ke ko kulo. Awe ni sa ko ngalawa mo kudi. Awe sa nsoa ta ko ngalawa mo lemuana. Wa mo lemuana. Hallelujah. Uh, I do believe that the rest of the word can wait and I can give it to you on Friday. I'll just mention this one thing and then I'll give you the rest of your evening uh, back. The Lord has been saying the word benzo, benzo a lot and we got to understand that it is um, an Depressant that is very much prevalent in Israel, United States of America, uh, Western Europe, Japan, Northern America, Latin uh, America, Canada, and apparently more than one third in America overdose uh, of the overdose deaths in the United States of America are by reason of this drug. And when the Lord gave it to me, he reminded me of the time he spoke about mandrax and the time he spoke about uh, it morphine. And he spoke about the abuse of antidepressants and the addiction that comes with them. And we need to understand something. As much as uh, they might have helped in the past, we need to understand that now we live in a world that is very sinister and there are so many antidepressants or legal drugs uh, that have been made as potent as illegal drugs. Hallelujah. And that are killing many. And that have many addicted the same way that people are addicted to cocaine and all the other drugs that we know, meth and all these other ones that are deemed as illegal. And God is saying he wants to set his people free from being dependent on antidepressants. Hallelujah. Because as a child of God, there is a drug that you can partake of that comes by 
the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit can just get you to be in that space where he deals with that pain. He deals with that trauma. He deals with everything that is coming against your sanity. That has your heart broken in pieces. Whatever that has traumatized you, there is help in the spirit of God. When you ascend in the spirit, when you get into the secret place, there is nothing that God cannot deal with. Hallelujah. I have been in situations where I didn't know how I was going to get out of those situations. But thank God, every time I found myself in such hard times, I would always, always run to Him. And when you get into that secret place, God knows how to get you out. It doesn't matter what it is. It doesn't matter how long it has, it has haunted you. It doesn't matter how long it has been there in your life. God can deal with it. You don't have to depend on some drug for you to be numbed up. Because what happens is that you are drugged. That means you are not aware. The more you are susceptible, when you, you get drugged by anything other than the Spirit of God, in, for the purposes of numbing pain, what you are doing is you are making yourself more uh, weak. You are weakening yourself and you are veiling yourself. Your doors are open for all manner of spirits to come in and to attack you. Hallelujah. But when you are drunk in the spirit, when you are high in the spirit, you are protected and you are getting healing and you are getting the relief that you need that cannot come by any other means other than God himself healing you from those things. And it's not going to take just me laying a hand on you, but it is going to also take you constantly and intentionally spending time in God's presence for those things to be purged out of your system. Hallelujah. Even just the, the some of people are even over whatever it is that had them depressed, but now they're depressed because they're addicted to the antidepressants. That happens. And God is saying, I can get you out of this addiction, but you have to be intentional. Come into the secret place. Nothing that is not holy can enter the secret place. So that means only you can enter. Everything else that had attached itself to your life that has nothing to do with your true identity and your true character will leave your life by reason of you entering the secret place. God bless you. God keep you until we meet again. Uh, there was a lot of words that the Lord has given. I just want to get through all of it uh, within this week so that coming next week there's a lot of revelation that is very necessary for this hour. That's when we will now start to, to dissect the scriptures alongside the word to really get to understand what God is doing in this time and how we are practically equipped for that which he's doing in our time. Remember, it is a time of favor amidst chaos. It is a time of favor amidst chaos. And there is a way for you to enter that favor. Hallelujah. I just want to bless you with this scripture that the Lord gave me today. And then I will give you the rest of your day. Please read it for yourself in your own private time and may it bless you as much as it has blessed me. And do meditate on it. There is a revelation that God wants to give you in this very time. Hallelujah. Especially verse 3. It is Psalm 43. It says, Vindicate me, O God, and plead my cause against the ungodly nation. O oh, deliver me from the deceitful and the unjust men. This one speaks of the snakes that want to come into your life and to ensnare you for you to be released from them in this hour. Hallelujah. You are, that means everyone, when you meditate on this chapter, anyone and anything that is not supposed to be in your life in this season will leave your life. Hallelujah. For you are the God of my strength. Why do you cast me off? Why do I go mourning because of the oppression of the enemy? 
Oh, send your light and your truth. Let them lead me. Let them bring me to your holy hill and your end to your tabernacle. Then I will go to the altar of God and God and to God my exceeding joy. And on the harp I will praise you, O God, my God. Why are you cast down, O my soul, and why are you disquieted within me? Hope in God, for I shall yet praise him, the help of my countenance and my God. This chapter will help you to come out of despair, to come out of disappointment, to come out of a place of discouragement and it will bring you into a place of direction, a place of hope, a place of bearing the countenance and the light of God, a place of favor, a place where you are so joyful, you start singing again for your Lord. Like voluntarily singing for him. A song will be birthed from within your spirit man and all the ungodly, all the serpents, all the scorpions that had attached themselves to your life will suddenly fall off. Why? Because this chapter brings about oil that will make things, ticks to just fall off of your life, for snakes to fall off of your life because you have ascended to the highest of places. Hallelujah. And most importantly, it will give you direction. You will start to hear the Spirit of God giving you clear steps of direction in this very time. That's why he said, oh, send out your light and your truth. Let them lead me. Hallelujah. So as you are listening to truth and as you are allowing his light to come into your being and to be ignited in and within you, you will see direction. You will know where you are supposed to go. God bless you and God keep you for the rest of your evening. We will meet again on Friday. Hallelujah.